At the tail end of his first term in office, President Uhuru Kenyatta returns to Parliament tomorrow to make a State of the Nation address. It is his last address from the August House in his first term in office, even as he seeks a fresh mandate in the general election that is 146 days away. The president expected to account for his administration's four years in office based on the promises he made ahead of the 2013 polls. At that time, he promised, among other things, to grow the economy in double digits, create one million jobs per year, construct 10,000 kilometers of tarmac roads, reduce the cost of living, and build five international stadia, promises whose implementation is expected to outline tomorrow. Uh, there will be no need for more promises. We should uh, just check the scorecard so far and see whether Kenyans have been united and uh, whether there is progress in the country. Those who say that he repeats what he said uh, is only a question of being consistent because you are not uh, shifting goalposts as to what direction you are taking the country to, towards. Some opposition lawmakers have threatened to disrupt the president's speech or boycott tomorrow's sittings altogether. Some, however, insist on attending just to give the head of state a hearing. Because the president has not shown any signs that is going to deviate from the past trend and this time around address the issues that are critical, that are, that are at core of the country's affairs. Personally, I don't think I will sit there and listen to that address. Tomorrow there will be no acrimony because we are planning to listen to the president tomorrow so that we can answer him in two days' time after tomorrow. We have another state of the national address as opposition. In his 2015 State of the Nation address, the president received a standing ovation <laughs> and tabled in the House a list of more than 175 top government officials linked to corruption. <laughs> when he ordered the named officials to step aside, pending investigations, the fight against corruption received a much-needed political boost from the highest office in the land. But none of those top officials has been successfully prosecuted or any of the alleged looted public resources recovered. The fight against corruption expected to feature prominently in his speech tomorrow. Kenyans want to see what measures has the president put in place so that the issues of corruption are the past. The people who have failed this country, if it means that there is a lot of corruption, it is us members of parliament who oversight the government. It is not the president who oversights in every committee. Every member of this house belongs to a certain committee. Though his State of the Nation address last year was for a while disrupted. When a section of the opposition turned rowdy, the president outlined his government's efforts in securing the country from external and internal criminals, enhance equity in the distribution of the national cake, support devolution, and invest more in developing the country's infrastructure to spur economic growth, areas he's expected to touch on again in his speech tomorrow. I think he needs to be candid with Kenyans and tell them this is what we achieved and this is what we did not achieve. It is very easy for people to go and say, oh, the president has not done, his government has not done. But all members of this uh, house, now this year, is the year for you to tell your people what you have done for them. Being an election year, the president as a key participant in the August polls will be expected to outline the government's plans to ensure the electoral body IABC is funded adequately to carry out its mandate, provide security during the exercise, and an enabling environment for the conduct of a free, fair, and credible general election. Tomorrow's State of the Nation address is the last one for President Huru Kenyatta before Kenyans head to the ballot in August. It offers him an opportunity to outline his government's performance record in the last four years and why he thinks he deserves a second term in the August race to State House. Francis Gashuri, Citizen TV, Nairobi.